Do you recognize these people? Do you feel more comfortable seeing them on your screen than some other random people? Do you think their laughter is funnier than that of regular people? Is something just funnier when you hear somebody laughing about it, especially the celebrities? Is background laughter really a good thing? Your mirror neurons will agree despite of what you think. Well, empathy is a good thing anyways, right? If you lack of it, you might be perceived as a psycho. But what if you empathize with a psycho? Next time you look at an artwork and you think, what kind of a madman made this? Think of the fact that that madman provokes emotion in you. You empathize with that psycho. So maybe that makes you a psycho too? But has it even always been so that people could even understand art? Take an audience of a caveman painter. He explains what hunting is like, he draws it, in a very, very simplified version of reality, on a rock. Your phone is the rock, and the audience is still the same. 50,000 years gone by. The primitivism of expressing yourself hasn't changed much, but the cavemen were real impressionists. They showed the world to the rest the way they saw it. They taught the rest based on their own experiences. The Bronze Age brought some changes to the relationship between art and people. Artists expressed their beliefs and ideas in art, mostly focusing on religious cults and rituals. But their beliefs and ideas, where did those come from? Somebody apparently made them up. So the artists were mostly ordered to create so as to support those beliefs. Anything that can't be supported by proof is fiction. The first real art is thereby fiction. An abstract thought cannot be art without the human mind. Art is not art without the subject. Try to find meaning in this world without having a human. The Egyptians found that human in their pharaoh. Their pharaoh found those ideas in gods. Maybe he just thought that it would be too much responsibility on him without those gods. So what came first, gods or pharaohs? Pharaohs. Tell people how great you are through paintings for 2000 years. Convince people that your religion is true by creating more artificial proof for it. Write one great book and everybody believes it was written by God. Draw ugly people and give them names, give your story names, give your history years, give your history topography and language. Learn that language to people. Bam! People believe in it. Thanks, art. And so, art's been the taproot to the human spirit since the caves. We all know this. And so, we're still riding the same engine, the same evolutionary engine of the creative force. It's alive in each one of ourselves. How could we not be creative? We all are in some way. However, maturing humanity had to wait for like a thousand years to start to be able to really apprehend art. So what does it really feel like to use your mind instead of your emotion? Could you really cognize the world around you through your eyes without thinking? Well, not anymore. Ooh. What's that painting on the wall? Funny. A square. Oh, interesting. A toilet in the middle of an exhibition. So anything can be art now? This ugliness too? How can that be? Disgusting. You say disgusting, I say aha. Art is emotion. Feel emotional? Cry for a bit and then just say it's been a great journey, guys. But uh, here's a man who once said about himself, the only difference between myself and a madman is that I am not mad. <laughs> we'll see. Will you welcome, please, Salvador Dali. Well, I think you've caught something. I can't help noticing that you have an anteater with you, Mr. Da. Oh, oh, please. But then the rest says, well, you know, I understand some art. Well, then I guess you also empathize all right. You mustn't be a psycho then, do you?
But wait! You think that artist is a madman? Doesn't that make you a madman too? Why do you wear two ties, Mr. Dally? Uh, this is, uh, is uh, because uh, today is Thanksgiving. Haha, <laughs> are you high or something? Shower thoughts? People ever ask you that on social media? Well, screw them all right. You make art. Tell them you've created your own language. Tell them that every letter is a drawing, so your writing is a painting. They got nothing on you. Be revolutionary and try to bullshit your way out of the shit that you write on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. You might as well create your own language and let it be. Is it unique? Then it's art. Secondary art is for pussies. Every sound has been made. Every color has been painted. Every thought has been expressed. You try and be unique in this universe where you don't even count. Now even being the self is art. Try to stand out and you're screwed. You want to be an artist, but that's impossible. Because you cannot become an artist, you have to be born one. You know who'd agree with me? Selvin Senatori. This guy says some crazy random stuff that actually makes sense. Maar kunstenaar ben je gast in je bloed, dat kun je niet zomaar aanmeten. Het kan wel, maar het houdt geen stand, denk ik. Mensen geloven het niet, het is niet echt. Mensen geloven dat niet. Guess what? He is an artist too. You don't believe? Look, he makes money. That's art. As Jesus of our time once said, Because we're all creators here, we're all one artist. But some people are artists of business. Some people are artists of conversation. Some people, you know. Yeah, but easy. You can be both. Nou, ik denk eerder, als kunstenaar moet je natuurlijk ook een beetje uh, commercieel zijn. Want je moet ook gewoon geld verdienen. Anders kun je dit niet in stand houden. All the artists fit in. They're just people, you know. They also need food, water, a place to sleep. They need to be able to buy a canvas and some paint. But what makes an artist an artist without a canvas and some oil? What does a painter do in space? What does he do without an audience? Social media provides an audience all right. Alleen wij nemen nu tegenwoordig social media zo serieus alsof het een fucking bijbel is, weet je? Dit is de waarheid. So is art only a business now? No. There are people who make art by sleeping in the streets. Now the next time a beggar asks you for money, regard him as an ultra-visionary artist that turns to full anarchy in search of a bigger truth, and you're just a mere plebeian that he attempts to fit in the society by giving him some change. You gave him money? Ha! You lost. And you filmed me, uh, that is the situation, that brings me back here to here. And now it's a loop back to someone who is filming me. See you? En dan is die voor jou. Dank je wel.